Today I'm talking about supplements. This is a subject I'm often asked about by clients and it's a real minefield out there. Before you start to think about supplementation, make sure that your diet is on point. So ensure you're weighing and measuring and tracking your food. You're getting a good intake of healthy sources of protein, a diverse range of fruits and vegetables, some nuts and seeds, cutting out your starches, your sugars, taking on board plenty of water and also cutting out alcohol and smoking, anything else that can have a negative effect on your health. Because we want to be using supplementation as exactly that, supplementing a good diet, not replacing or making up for all the holes or the negative foods that we bring into our diet. Don't also forget that making sure that your training is in line with your goals is going to bring better results than just adding supplements to your diet and also making sure that you have enough good quality sleep. Supplements are there to help improve our performance, to improve our recovery, and they are also there to make up any deficiencies we may have in our diet. So a lot of you are already taking a supplement or performance enhancing substance and that would be caffeine. Caffeine does have some performance benefits. It creates an adrenaline response in the body that causes the body to release more fatty acids into the bloodstream that will provide us with more energy, especially during those longer workouts. That increase in fatty acids also is going to help our fat metabolism and the stimulant effect of caffeine is going to help perk us up for the workout. But generally, most studies show that the optimum amount to take on board is up to two cups of black coffee or coffee with minimal amounts of milk. Milk can inhibit the absorption of caffeine, so it's important that we have minimal amounts of milk when we're taking that on board. So caffeine can help improve our performance to a small extent. Do not mistake that for taking on board pre-workout which contains tons of caffeine or Red Bull or any of those high caffeine drinks. They may feel like they're giving you a real buzz, but they are not great for you. Just traditional coffee, green tea, cup of tea is going to be much better for you if you're looking at performance. The most common nutrient that people will supplement would be protein. And that is because often people struggle to get enough protein in their diet for peak performance, especially if you're looking to keep your calorie intake low, but yet still take on board enough protein. Check back to my previous videos on protein to see what I recommend for people. When you're looking at protein powders, the first thing to look at is to make sure that the ratio of protein to carbohydrates is correct to meet your goals. Generally, I look for at least twice as much protein as there is carbohydrates. What we want is bang for our buck. Protein, lots of protein for a low number of calories. And if we've got a high amount of carbs in there, that's not going to be the case. If you have to have more carbohydrates because you struggle to gain weight, then yes, you can look at protein shakes with higher carb content, but I would always recommend you try and get those calories from more whole foods rather than supplement. Protein powders are really just there to make up the protein without adding too many calories on. When you're choosing your protein powders, aside from that protein to carbohydrate mix, look at the quality of that protein. The cheaper proteins, you remember that whey protein as an example comes from milk from cows. And if you're buying cheaper sources, they're going to be cutting costs. And one of those costs they'll be cutting will be where that milk comes from, how those cows have been farmed. So be aware of that when you're choosing your protein. Also, when you're looking at cheaper protein powders, Often the mixability and the taste aren't very good, so when you put it together in your shaker, it's not going to be very pleasant to take on board. And the more expensive protein powders will generally contain digestive enzymes, which will help you to absorb the protein and also for your stomach to be able to take on that protein. When I have a more expensive protein, I have no ill effects. Cheaper proteins will have an effect on your stomach health. You may feel gassy, so you may smell you may also feel bloated and just generally not feel great from taking that protein shake. 
Think about the sources of your protein, the quality of that protein. Don't go for the cheapest one available because it often isn't that great. If you're looking for some more advice on that, then please drop me a message. I'm happy to tell you what I've taken over my years of training and what I suggest, what I recommend, and maybe what I don't recommend as well. When you are buying protein powders, some of those protein powders may come with other supplements mixed in or often they're offered alongside it. And I'm going to talk about some of those supplements here. And generally, these, these supplements are going to help people that trying to build up their lean tissue and other than their muscle. The first supplement that you will see alongside protein, not an in protein powders, is creatine. Now, creatine mixes with the phosphorus in our body to create phosphocreatine, which is a fuel source. It is that rapid fuel source that we use for lifting weights and for super high intensity movements and workouts. Creatine is one of the supplements that is proven to give you performance gain so you're, you will get better results. You will be able to lift weights for a couple more reps without resting and you will see improvements in your strength and also in your lean tissue. In other words, you will build muscle. There is a negative to creatine in that it does make you hold on to more water in your cells so therefore you will also gain weight. Remember the weight is water weight though so you can cut that weight quite quickly just by cutting out the creatine. So if you are trying to build lean muscle but then get cut down for a photo shoot or a beach holiday or a date, then you can do so. But there is definitely a benefit for those of you that are looking to get stronger and get leaner, in other words, build more muscle from taking on board creatine. And I do recommend that for people who are looking for those results. Alongside that, you'll often see something called HMB. HMB has some small benefit, but mainly just for novice lifters. So people in their first few months of training, they will get some strength gain results, but really it's negligible. Doesn't mean you should avoid it, just means don't buy it as a requirement. If it's in the protein powder, then great. You're not really going to lose anything from having that on board, but don't seek it out. Glutamine is another one that can have some small benefits with your recovery. There are some, some studies that show it does improve recovery. So we can, if that's in there, great. But I wouldn't necessarily seek it. I don't think it's necessary. Like I say, if it's in your, in your protein shake, then great. But creatine, definitely, I recommend people looking to improve their strength. The next supplement I recommend to most people would be omega-3s, fish oils. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory, and they are really useful for basically reducing inflammation and counteracting any pro-inflammatory pro foods that we take on board. Now, we do need some inflammation, we also need, uh, we, but we just don't want too much. And often, our regular diets will contain lots of pro-inflammatory foods, so they make omega-3s will help to counteract that. But if we can reduce the pro-inflammatory foods, we can have healthy, whole, whole sources of um, vegetables and fruits, and good intake of quality food in our diet, we generally will need less omega-3s. They are just there as a supplement. Um, so the amount that you need depends on how many <laughs> pro-inflammatory foods you're taking on board. But generally, omega-3s are going to be a benefit to the majority of people, and I recommend most people take on board those, and they will see some improvement in how they feel, also can help improve brain function, and some evidence can suggest it can improve fat metabolism. In the winter time, we know the benefits of vitamin D and you can get some, I mean, all of these, a lot of these supplements, you can get blood tests to see if you're deficient in those. Remember those blood tests will only give you results based on the time you're having those tests. So it may vary at different times of the year, um, but vitamin D can be required not so much in the summertime. When I'm filming this video right now, it's been beautiful weather for the last three months, so no one should be deficient in vitamin D, but through those winter months, those darker months, that can be quite useful for you. I really, I recommend people to take magnesium on board. I find it really useful for recovery. It's important throughout all of your cell functions. So magnesium, I do recommend to people and zinc also as a booster for the immune system. So if we're talking about the sort of supplements I recommend to help you feel better and for recovery, omega-3s, vitamin Ds in the winter, magnesium and zinc. 
in addition to those supplements I've previously mentioned, if you're having problems with your joint health, maybe soreness or tightness, you can look at adding on some joint supplements that contain glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM. But I would always say, look at your diet first of all. If you reduce the amount of pro-inflammatory foods in there and you're getting more nutrients into your diet, you're taking on board those omega-3s, that magnesium in there as well, often that can have a huge benefit and then you won't require those joint supplements. In addition, look at your training regime. Is it doing what it should be doing for your joint health? If you've answered those questions with a yes, then joint supplements are your next step. But I always want to minimize, and I said this throughout the video, the amount you are supplementing. We don't want to be taking on board powders and gels and tablets all day long for various conditions. We want to be solving it, looking at nutrition and looking at our training. And then even sleep is obviously going to massively improve your recovery. So looking at those three things first and lifestyle, if your joints are hurting, look at your lifestyle as well, whether certain things you're doing are making that happen before you go down that route. But those joint supplements can work in the right doses. Now, often people are looking to get leaner and burn fat, and there are a couple of supplements that have some evidence to help. But let's talk about those. There's green tea. Green tea is shown to improve or increase your metabolism, and therefore you burn more calories throughout the day. However, taking green tea supplements is only shown to increase your metabolism by 80 calories. Now, if you've been tracking your food, you will know that 80 calories doesn't equate to very much. It equates to, I think it's a banana, right, one banana. So if you are supplementing yourself with green tea, you can have one more banana or maybe two thirds of a chocolate biscuit. Now, if that's worth the price of a green tea supplement for you, go with it. Otherwise, doesn't seem worth it really. Uh, CLA also can help to improve fat burn. And there actually is some evidence that it can help the amount of fat you burn on a daily basis. I would say, having never tried it myself, I can't really give conclusive evidence towards it. I can only look at the studies and they do show that you can, you can reduce your body fat by taking a supplement that contains CLA. That's um, conjoined linoleic acid, I believe. Excuse my pronunciation and whether I've got that right or not. So that can help to benefit fat metabolism. But I would say with all of that, a much bigger difference will come from you getting your diet on point first. And I think you can't rely on those other supplements to help you out if you're not looking at that end first. But if you're looking to get that 1%, the Dave Brailsford, who was you know, chief of British Cycling and was looking at gaining those little 1% all the way through, then yes, supplementation through CLA maybe can help your fat metabolism. Like I say, I haven't recommended it to any clients and I haven't tried it myself. I just know that the evidence does suggest it can work. So if you are looking at that, try looking at it a bit further. But basically, if you're looking to cut your body fat, diet is the key, training regime is the key, sleep is the key. Everything else, just tiny bits extra. In terms of making up for deficiencies, if you're looking at a multivitamin, most of the time, that is a waste of time because we can get all of the stuff that you get in the multivitamin through diet. If your diet is diverse enough, you should get enough. And often, those multivitamins, the amount they contain and the way it's delivered to the body are of little use to you. The only people that really may need to um, make up for some holes in their diet are vegans. Now, you think I'm going to jump down and, and talk about many different areas. It's actually quite possible with a vegan diet to get nearly all of your nutrients through that vegan diet. You just have to be a little bit more thoughtful with what you're taking on board in terms of proteins. Um, but calcium and iron, you could get plenty of that from your diet. So a lot of people say, oh, I'm iron deficient because you're vegan or vegetarian. You won't necessarily be that if you are sensible with your diet. So uh, you don't really need to supplement much as a vegan. The one area that you will need is vitamin B12. Now, a lot of vegan foods nowadays have that in their, um, the processed foods will have it fortified into the foods because it is very difficult to find from vegan sources, it mainly occurs in dairy and uh, meat-based product. But you can get it supplemented 
either as a tablet form or fortified in your foods. I know there are some sorts, I think shiitake mushrooms are one of those that you can get it from, but I don't think people are eating plentiful supplies of shiitake mushrooms just for vitamin B12. So if you are vegan, that is the only area I think you may struggle to get without um, supplementation. Everything else, as long as your diet is on point, then feel free to get the healthy start you can from that vegan lifestyle. Now, some supplements just at the end here that maybe you, you need to sort of avoid. I've talked about pre-workouts. You don't need those. Uh, NO, nitric oxide, might give you a nice pump during the workout, but very little evidence to suggest it will give you anything other than that. So if you see like NO in a big, you know, gold tubs that you see when you go to those supplement stores, not really a lot of use to that. And the other thing definitely avoid would be energy drinks. You don't need an energy drink. What is an energy drink? It's just basically sugar and water. Sugar and water. Nothing any more than that. They talk about isotonic. Well, the most isotonic drink is water. Um, I know people talk about milk can, can be a little bit more easily absorbed than water for hydrating. But let's just say we don't need an energy drink for that. If you need some sugars before your workout, because maybe you haven't had enough glycogen, maybe you are glycogen depleted and you're doing a high intensity workout and you want something, then something simple as mixing fruit juice with water is going to be plenty in there. There's going to be plenty of sugars in there. If you mix you know, a, a half a glass of orange juice with half a glass of water, you're going to get plenty of energy from that. And there's your energy drink there. Um, the other thing, you know, even just something simple as a, as a little bit of Ribena can do the job for you as well. So don't think you need an energy drink to work out. And I, I don't like seeing anyone coming into my training sessions with anything other than water. If you turn up here with a Leucosade, I will immediately tell you why you shouldn't be drinking the Leucosade unless you require loads and loads of glycogen, which most of us will not require that because we take plenty of that on board in our regular diets. And that's no slight on Leucosade. Any other energy drinks are applied in this uh, conversation. So there's my discussion on supplementation. As I, dis as I talked about, there's loads to discuss here. I can go down all the different paths, talk about each of those individually, but I want to give you a brief overview of what we are looking at. So let me just go over the brief points. So firstly, diet is king. Get that right first. Get your training regime. Make sure it lines up with your goals. Make sure you're getting enough sleep and enough water on board. And also cut out the crap from your diet and your life. Do that first. If you're not doing that and you think, oh, I'm just going to take these tablets, that will fix it, you're on the wrong path, guys. Then and only then, think about supplementation. Remember, caffeine can help with your performance and your fat metabolism, so feel free to enjoy a coffee pre-workout. Then we look at protein. Make sure you're getting good quality sources of protein from your food, first of all, and then good quality protein supplements. And after that, creatine for strength, then we've got for your recovery, omega-3s, vitamin D in the winter time, because you should be getting plenty of sun this time of year, and magnesium and zinc. And zinc, obviously, at this time during this crisis, if your immune system, making sure you have zinc on board is going to be quite useful. We talked about how fat burners and, and metabolism boosters have, an, have a very small effect. And if you want to take those, fine. But remember, the effect is minimal compared to a good diet. And then I talked about how only really the only supplement vegans need would be vitamin B12. The rest of it they should be able to get from their regular diets and then try to eliminate any of the other crappy stuff that we don't need from our diets. If you have any questions, because I'm sure there's something I missed or something I brushed over here, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm going to be producing many more of these videos. So if you have a video you'd like me to produce and talk about a subject that you want to know more about, please ask. Happy to help. Like, subscribe, share as much as you can. And I shall speak to you all very soon. If you're watching this on video, we are now available as a podcast on Spotify and other podcasting services too. Thanks, guys.